Hey, thank you for watching this video. There's more online at Embark Online. You can tweet me, and of course, here's the pie guy. All right, this is first grade, module six, lesson 14. And in this lesson, we're really just con continuing what we've been doing the past couple of lessons, which is really allowing our students to continue developing a variety of strategies, number sense based strategies, on how to add two two-digit numbers where there is some regrouping involved. Uh, but we're not really going to be calling it regrouping because at this point we are not teaching the standard algorithm. Instead, we're allowing our students to kind of like play in the sandbox and use a variety of different strategies. None of them are particularly efficient compared to that standard algorithm, but that's not the point. The point at uh, for these lessons is to really help our students develop number sense, how to look at a number, break it apart, and put them back together in strategic and str um, useful ways. We really, when we're trying to build that fluency in, with our students, one of the components of fluency is being able to strategically use a variety of different methods um, that are that makes sense, all right? So we want students to be flexible and we want them to be able to use a variety of strategies when they're solving these problems. So let's get started. Uh, parents and teachers. So teachers, you have probably seen this already because it's in the teacher edition. Parents, you can definitely download the teacher edition if you choose, but this is straight out of the teacher edition. It's just three examples that students might use for solving the same problem, 46 plus 28. This method uh, involves leaving that first number alone, that first add end alone, and decompose the second into uh, tens and ones. So you get 46 plus 20 gives us 66. And then we add in the eight. Uh, they, they further decompose down here and say, well, 66 needs four more to get to the next decade. And so that would be four and four, so that's 74. Uh, one way to do it, it's not required. Another strategy that students might use is they might simply uh, go to that next decade right from the get-go. So in this case, 46 needs four more, so that we're going to decompose 28 to 4 and 24, and then add the 46 plus the 4 to get 50, and then add the remaining 24. And then another strategy, uh, and this is not the last, uh, there's other strategies as well, is uh, this strategy is decompose both numbers and add the 10s together, add the 1s together, and then combine them. Uh, you know, and there's other methods. We could use quick 10s. Uh, we could use some sort of hybrid method of all three of these uh, uh, strategies. So uh, the point of this lesson, parents and teachers, is to really allow your students uh, to solve these problems in a variety of methods if they choose, or they can choose one method and run with it until they start to learn that, oh, wait a second, if I'm strategic, I might use a different method and have an easier time, you know. So we really want students to kind of grow through this process uh, individually and let them pick and choose which method they want and when to use which method. I want to point out, um, parents and teachers, that this, the way these problems are carefully laid out is really kind of beautiful. If you look at it, it begins with the first problem right here, where there is no regrouping whatsoever. Uh, we never cross over a 10, uh, and we start off with a nice simple problem, and then we move to a problem where we just barely go over 10, right? Nine plus two is 11, so we just barely go over 10. And, and also, it's easy because it's really close to the decade because it's 59, and we still, we stick around, and it's 39, it's pretty close to the decade, so we're kind of nudging the kids towards one particular strategy. But then the problems gradually get further and further away from the decade, from a friendly number, and students begin to have to be a little bit more strategic about which method they're going to use. So really, I'm not gonna solve any of these problems. I just wanted to point out, teachers, uh, some things that you might not notice about the way these problems are laid out. It's really beautiful how they're laid out. They're not random. 
They are carefully and strategically sequenced to guide our students into more complex thinking. And the second set of problems is just more of the same. Uh, it begins with a relatively easy problem. In this case, um, our ones add up to directly to 10. So we're going to get a nice, round, beautiful answer. But then um, we immediately begin to see the sequencing, how this, the problems are sequenced to gradually get more and more difficult and uh, nudging our students to use a variety of different strategies rather than just sticking with one strategy and trudging on whether that strategy is the most efficient or not, right? So we're really trying, they're carefully nudging our students to use a variety of different strategies. And that wraps up this video. I didn't do a lot of math problems, but I, the point of this lesson is being the third or fourth lesson that is really focusing on how to add a pair of two-digit numbers. The point of this is really to allow our students to use a variety of different strategies. And I wanted parents and teachers to see that the sequencing of the problems as we move from problem one to problem two to problem three are carefully designed to nudge our students to use a variety of different strategies. So that wraps up first grade module six, lesson 14. And if it's not too much trouble, go ahead and subscribe to my channel.